Hi everyone and welcome to this episode of Kuiper Labs. Um, in this video we're going to be looking at um, the relationship between mass and volume. So kind of following up some of the activity that we did a little earlier um, to look at what this tells us about the nature of matter and um, some of the principles of chemistry. Okay, so just kind of re remembering what you did in this particular activity. You had some samples of iron and aluminium rods. Iron with the symbol of Fe and aluminium the symbol of Al. And you had samples of the rods of varying lengths, um, so five of each. Um, and so then you measured their mass and you in grams, and you measured their volume in mils by water displacement as the technique of taking a measuring cylinder filled with water, placing the rod in it and seeing how much it pushed the um, how much it pushed the, the, the water level up by and then that working out um, how much volume that it would take up. And so then you hopefully you constructed a table of results and then we were looking at creating a graph. Let's see if I can get these bottom axes on the screen there for you. Okay, and so what you are asked to do, you are asked to do a graph of mass in grams on the y-axis and volume in mils on the x-axis. Okay, so you do your scale of measurements of mass, your scale of measurements of volume in mils, okay, and then we would be um, plotting points. Okay, so you know, so for um, your samples of iron and samples of aluminium, um, so you get two lines on the, the set of axes. Um, now, thinking about these graphs, um, and hopefully you did, rather than just chucking it all together, that we recognise that the graph should extend to zero, zero. The lines of best fit that we draw should extend to zero, zero, because it makes it's logical for us, it makes common sense, that a sample that has zero mass would also have zero volume, because it's therefore not there, and there is no sample. Um, and so then what you would have noticed, as you plotted your lines, is that you get one line that looks like that, or, or something like that, and one that looks like that. And we noticed that this one corresponded to the aluminium, and this one corresponded to iron. Now this was interesting, and hopefully you know, use some straight lines from your five data points for each line, and so then you see a distinct difference in the lines that we construct. So what we're going to talk about in this, the rest of this video is thinking about, well, why does this work and how can we explain why this happens? Okay, so I'm going to leave the graph there. Okay, so there's a couple of kind of takeaway points that we can, we can get from this graph, but I'll see if I can jot them down up here. The first one is that for each line, as mass increased, so did volume. Okay, so looking at a general sort of relationship, seeing that we had it sloped up, that as we got a bigger piece, a piece with a bigger volume, it had a larger mass. As we got a larger mass piece, that it increased in volume. Okay, so it took up more space than smaller pieces did. Okay, um, but what we saw is the, the lines different had different slope. Or gradient. So that is, if you calculated the slope of your lines, that we saw that aluminium would have been somewhere around about 2.5, um, and when you calculate for iron, it's somewhere around about 8. So distinctly different. Um, so what we're seeing there is that um, the slope of this line means something. Means something physical. Okay, that is, it's not just it's not just a mathematical kind of construct. It actually represents a relationship between the mass and volume of a different of different substances, of that particular substance. Okay, so we if we look at the slope of the units of that that slope. Okay, so for um, our iron, so the, our our slope was eight, but if we look at combining the units of our y-axis over our x-axis, because we did, you know, rise over run, we did units of grams, 8, so I have 8 grams for every 1 mil. And likewise, if I look at aluminium, I'd have 2.5 grams for every 1 mil. So what that means, so if I say it as a sentence, that is, for every 8 grams of iron, I have 1 mil of volume. For every 2.5 grams of aluminium, I have 1 mil of volume. 
Or likewise, I could look at these relationships. If I just kind of take out the fact that it's, it's a slope of a line, I could actually kind of flip them around. So I could say that for every one mil of iron, I will have eight grams. For every one mil of aluminium, I will have 2.5 grams. What this does is that now we have a relationship we can use to calculate the mass or volume of a sample of iron or aluminium if we're given the other property. So if we're given as a given mass of aluminium, we can know how much space it takes up. If we're given a, a, a rod of a certain size or a sample of a certain size, we can calculate its mass just using these graphs, not using any kind of mystical algorithms or formulas or any kind of woo-woo. The idea is that we're using a graph we can read off it and say, all right, if I've got a sample that's got this volume, it will have this mass. You know, we can, we can use the graph like this. Or if I've given a sample of iron of this mass, then I can read the graph and I can go down and work out its volume. Okay, that's how we can use this relationship. Now, when you see units of grams for every one mil, or it's written as grams per mil, this should look like a familiar property that you might have seen before. We call this relationship between an object's mass and its volume as density. Its density. So, for every substance it has a given density. Okay, so that is, we, um, we know that for every one mil of volume it takes up a certain number of grams. For every certain number of grams it has one mil of volume. Okay, that's what we call this relationship. Okay, so it's not some, you know, D equals M over V, some, you know, mystical formula. It's actually a, a real physical relationship that we can use to calculate the size of different things. Okay, so we've got two kind of possible explanations for why we see these differences. Okay, I'm just going to quickly kind of go, go through them. Okay, so if I, I'm going to draw some simple kind of diagrams. Okay, so I've kind of got some different possibilities here. So let's say I've got, these are my particles of aluminium, and these are iron. Now the first explanation, so remember that iron was much bigger, you know, it was around about 8, than aluminium, which was 2.5. So one explanation is that we've got um, particles with um, more mass in iron. That is, the particles themselves are, that they have, they've got more mass, and I'm going to try and represent that as like big chunky particles. Okay, so I've got the same number of particles in a given space, we just have to use your imagination to think that these boxes are the same size. So one option is we've got particles with more mass. The iron particles weigh a lot more. Another possibility that we have, again, assuming that these boxes are the same size, I did a bit better this time around, is that we have more particles in Fe, but they're the same mass. Okay, so if I've got six particles like this in aluminium, maybe I've got um, 12 particles or, or more in my iron sample. Okay, so I've got the same particles of the same mass and size, but there's more particles. Okay, and they're maybe they're packed a little bit more closely together in this sample. Okay, and then, op so this is option two, option one, or option three is kind of a combo of one and two. Okay, as far as maybe the particles have more mass, and maybe we do have more particles in that space, but we can't really know for sure. At the moment, we've got these these are our hypotheses, and so we kind of just have to, um, kind of just have to wait and see. Okay. Um, thanks very much for watching. Bye for now.